This week, I talk with Stephanie Gorton, who founded the House of Hobby, which creates the perfect space for ladies to express their creativity and femininity. Stephanie bravely shares how it was through the rather painful realisation that she herself had no hobbies of meaning in her life that led her on a journey of self-discovery which resulted in the concept of the House of Hobby. She explains how her goal is to produce a creative focused space for women to be vulnerable and real about where they are in life, a space where they can feel connected, understood and part of a community. Stephanie also talks through how she took House of Hobby from a side hustle in November 2017 to quitting her job eight months later to go full time on it. Whether you're male or female, there's lots to learn on many levels in this conversation with this beautifully down to earth lady who's superbly passionate about women being real and being the best that they can be. So enjoy, Stephanie. Hello and welcome back to WA Real. I'm your host, Bryn Edwards. Going deep to find your purpose and then leaving your career to act on that and create the perfect space for ladies to express their femininity is what we'll be exploring today with my guest, Stephanie Gorton. Stephanie, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. So one of the questions I always kick off with is, I um, ask people about their, how they came to Western Australia, because some are born here and some, like me, came later on. And you yourself came from Queensland when you were 15, is that right? That's correct, yeah. So tell me about that. How did you end up coming here when you were 15? Um... I think it was about the height of the mining boom at the time and uh, my, my my parents had separated when I was eight but remained very close friends and um, we I was living with my dad at the time and my mum met a guy online and he was in a little town up north called Panawanaka which is about 800 people and um, she went over one day to meet him face to face in Panawanaka and um, fell in love with him and decided to move there and I was about 13 at the time and uh, she went over for a few years and then eventually I went over there a couple of times obviously to holiday and to visit her mm-hmm. um, so I came over to West and loved it and absolutely loved it um, met my first boyfriend at 15 and then said to dad that's it I'm moving to Panawanaka <laughs> um, and dad said no well, I'll come with you so uh, we all moved over here yeah officially when I was 15 and then I had to go to boarding school in Perth um, for the last few years of high school um, and then remained here ever since Right, so yeah. you willingly came over. Willingly came, yeah. I fell in love with the Pilbara, like it's a beautiful part of the world. Um, and yeah, willingly willingly came over. Mm. And it's gorgeous and I would never call anywhere else home now. Right. Yeah. What was boarding school like? Um, it's so funny because when you're a child, your parents threaten you with boarding school a lot. Mm. Um, so my parents were always like, you know, if you're naughty, you, get, you go to boarding school. Um, but... When it actually came time to go to boarding school, it was the best, to be completely honest. I loved it. It was like having a constant sleepover with your girlfriends. Um, And then on top of that, I think it was really good for my relationship with my parents because you have somebody else telling you when to study, that you can't do something or yes or no or you know what I mean? It's not your parents and your parents are probably sitting there going, oh, we would have said yes, even then they wouldn't have. But they're not the ones that are actually telling you off, if that makes sense, because we have house mums. Yes. Um, so I missed my parents and it made me respect them more. So, yeah, I loved boarding school. Would recommend sending your kids to boarding school. <laughs> mm, mm. Uh, what, from the age of 15 onwards? Or? Um, I, I think probably from... From earlier, I think it's it, I think it's really good for character building and for creating independence. I haven't lived at home since boarding school, um, and you know straight out of high school, I, I moved you know straight into real life and got a job. And you know because my parents weren't here, they weren't here to support me through that growth period. So I think that um, it's really good for you know creating really strong independence from a young age. Yeah. And has that stood you in good stead for? things that you do now I like to think so <laughs> I like to think that independence is um well definitely when we talk about femininity um I think independence is really um important and mm. something that's not celebrated enough and not encouraged enough in that area so for me um I think that's one of the key reasons why I've, um I enjoy doing what I do now um and enjoy leading women in that regard mm. yeah so tell me a bit about house of hobby cool so house cool. of hobby cool <laughs> I love talking about it. Um, House of Hobby is, uh, we run creative workshops in Perth. So, um, you know, anything from candle making to um, pottery, resin workshops, you name it. Like we run it. We we love 
like getting creative. Um, but the the whole purpose of House of Hobby really is to um, bring women together and to connect women. Um, so um, they're female only, although in saying that we get quite a few men come along to the pottery workshops and that's fine. Um, but we do really target more of a female audience. Um, and it's really about, yeah, giving them a bit of space to take a bit of time out so that they can resume their lives less busy and less cluttered and, you know, having put themselves first for three hours of their week. Where yeah. did the idea for this come from? I, uh... Because you went on quite a journey, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Tell yeah. Like, like anybody, usually these things don't come to you, you know, you don't wake up one morning and just decide. Um, yeah. well, well, that wasn't the it's case going, for me. You had to go and work for it. You had to go work for it. I had to have a few heartbreaks along the way. Tell me about that. Um, I was actually... Um, going to move to Scotland for a, for a young for a young man that I was um, with at the time and um, I'd quit my job and I'd have my box packed and everything was all ready to go and I was about to move to Scotland when um, he broke up with me so I found myself very suddenly that's pretty tough it was really tough yeah it was it was pretty crappy um, although looking back now you always realize that it was you know a dodged bullet um, but at the same time yeah at the time it was it was obviously very heartbreaking I was only 25 so um, you know I hadn't wasn't really that adept with dealing with that sort of stuff at that stage um, and had quit my job which was a great job um, that I loved it paid really well um, was probably the height of my career at that stage um, and I quit my job to move there. So I had a four weeks left um, of that job um, and realized pretty quickly that I needed to find obviously something else to do. Um, and when I was changing jobs, I obviously was updating my resume. Um, and at the, bo the bottom of my resume, there was a hobby section. Um, and I remember obviously just sitting in my bed writing this resume out and I was heartbroken and I was feeling really lost and super alone and really like I didn't know where the next paycheck was going to come from and I didn't know even you know what I was going to do with myself and I was just in all sorts of pain um and I got to this hobbies part of my resume and I was like I actually have no idea what I'm going to write here because for the last you know I don't know six years or seven years of me being an adult woman I have spent all of my time just getting drunk um, or going out with my girlfriends or um, chasing men. And then, you know, once I'd met men, I would just kind of give everything I had to them so that, you know, I would give away my hobbies and my time so that I could spend more time with them and make them happy and do the things that they needed me to do. Um, Why was that important? I think... Oh, <laughs> depends how deep you want to go here. Um, I think that I grew up as an only child and I grew up mostly with my dad. So um, I think I have a natural need to um, appease or please or, um, you know, I kind of give over a lot of my power to, like to men because that was uh, someone, a role model who raised me and someone who I always wanted to respect and make sure that I was, you know, living up to expectations and things like that. So I think the deep answer there is that, yeah, probably, mm. you know, needing needing to have approval of men. Um, but I think that I've always just, I've always been a massive romantic. So I've always just wanted to be in love. <laughs> um, and I thought that, that there's nothing wrong with that. I love love. <laughs> My partner now would laugh at me when he hears this. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to be in love. I just wanted to be happy in love. And it was kind of my life's mission to find somebody and to have another person to spend my life with. Mm. And yeah, and so I, I was writing my resume and I realized I had no hobbies and I was heartbroken and I was like, girl, you need to pick yourself up and get on with it. Um, and you're going to start by finding out what interests you mm. and what you actually want to do with your life. Because right now you don't know which jobs to apply for because you don't know your interests. You don't know what you're passionate about. You've just fallen into jobs that you're good at. Um, and so I basically spent a whole year, I promised that I wouldn't date and I would stop drinking. Um, so I spent a whole, well, it didn't end up being a year, but it's been about six to eight months of solidly going to all sorts of self-development seminars, um, you know, courses. So things like, um, painting courses, interior design courses. Um, I did a floristry apprenticeship, um, all sorts of different stuff. And I spent, you know, a lot of money 
trying to find this hobby, this elusive hobby that I couldn't find anywhere, only to figure out that actually my favorite thing to do was to chat with my girlfriends. And I just needed to create a bigger group of women to do that with. Right. So that was where the idea came about. I kind of tied the creative aspect of what I'd been doing in with the feeling lonely aspect. And mm. It must have been quite confronting to all of a sudden wake up to the fact that how old were you? Like, I was 25, yeah, just hey, about to turn 26. Hey, hey, I'm 25, 26, and I don't actually even know the person that I'm inhabiting. Yeah. Because I don't know what my hobbies are. Yeah. And it wasn't just hobbies. Just through that. Just, you threw that. That, that, that was the, the, I guess, yeah, like the, the hobbies bit was the point where it, it really hit me kind of like a ton of bricks and like I always knew that I'd been putting everybody else first and that my own needs and my own need to find myself, my own need for independence and for, um, you know, all, all that has had been drawn from other people's expectations or um, impressions of me and not actually from where I wanted it to come from, from mm. myself, if that makes sense. Living, listening and living out the scripts that are handed to you. Literally, exactly that. Very eloquently put. <laughs> and so you came to this conclusion that um, hanging out, with your girlfriends was the thing that you actually liked doing. Yeah. And I was like, cool, how can I turn this into a business? <laughs> and, and was it like a big penny drop? You're like, uh, holy crap, that's it. Absolutely. I remember coming home from, I, it was, I, was that was at a self-development seminar that I realized. And I remember coming home and I came home to my, one of my girlfriends who I was living with at the time. And I was like, I found it. I've got it. Oh my God. It makes sense. All of a sudden I was so excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was literally like, I was like dancing for days. Like I was, you, honestly, I took two more days off work. I just didn't give a crap. Like I was like, I'm going to do it. Like I'm going to, I'm going to find a way to make this work, yes. you know? And I was so passionate, of course, fear sets in eventually and doubt, but uh, <laughs> in that moment though, yeah, it was the penny dropped and it was just like, this is what I'm supposed to do. You said you went to many self-development um, courses, seminars, books, things like that. What were the really good ones and what were the less good ones? Oh, some of them are based in Perth. So I'm going to be really picky here about what I say because I don't want to, I'm not bad naming, bad mouthing any. Um, well, it's, I think it's, I think it's. It's personal preference. It is personal preference. It's like looking at art or listening to music or yeah. something like that, you know, and, and, or like doing podcasts, you know, some people <laughs> like the message that a certain yeah. person puts out and another person doesn't. Yeah. And yet it can be vice versa. Yeah. So the okay. one that let I me, went to, let me rephrase yeah. the question then. So Perfect. it's more appropriate. Which are the ones that you really resonated with Perfect. and which are the ones that you didn't? Excellent. So, um, <laughs> the one, one that I really, so the first one I ever went to was by a group called MJB seminars. Um, and it's a guy called Mitch Bowen. Um, they're based in Perth here. And, uh, I went to like a goal setting night that they had. And that was the first time that they really opened my eyes to the fact that the world was the world I see was based on my own perception, was based on my own experiences and belief systems. Um, mm. And I had never understood that before. I didn't realize, I thought the way that I saw the world was the way that everybody saw the world. I didn't realize yes. at that stage that... Everyone has a different map of the world. Yeah, and that was really, like he, they call them rose-tinted glasses. Um, so, you know, and then obviously everyone's glasses are different, you know, um, and I really loved the analogy and I, it was really the first time I was like, whoa, you know, mind, my mind was blown and I was like, yeah. I'm dead keen to, um, you know, do more of this. Um, I didn't do their course that so they upsold at the end of the free seminar, um, because it did, it felt like a cult. It sounded like a cult. It felt like a cult. Um, yeah. one of my girlfriends did do the course and, um, a couple of them actually did the course, um, and didn't love it i think there are great takings you can get from it um it just doesn't feel it didn't feel super authentic yep. um to me um but it was amazing like my recommendation to anyone listening would be to go to as many free seminars as you can they're all going to try and upsell you at the end so be strong yep. but uh <laughs> and, and make a decision fun, yeah exactly um but take as much as you can from the free seminars the one that actually opened my mind to everything was called authentic education they come to perth a couple of times a year um it's an all-day free seminar uh and that was really where everything locked into place for me. Um, I didn't do their full course either, um, but I would rec really recommend if anyone ever wanted to go. And I, fa I found that really eye-opening for me. That was when the penny dropped. That was mm. my, my experience when the penny dropped. Um, since then, I've been to Tony Robbins in Sydney um, for what his did you go and say? UPW. Um, and so it's like the four-day intensive 
mental workshop um so and includes the fire walking it includes the fire walk yep walked on the fire and um that was mind-blowing and i could not recommend that enough it's i think it's like 800 dollars. it is worth every penny like i would recommend anybody go to that it's it was everything so mm. um i've read a lot of books and things like that as well um and i went to a few other courses but yeah they're probably my i think everyone's different i think you should try all of them um mm. go to as many free seminars as you can they're always here in Perth. Yes. Yeah. I think, yeah, I've obviously read a lot of books, does a lot, um, done a lot of online courses and things like this. And um, yeah, you take bits and bobs, the, mm. the most effective. Yeah. One of the things I do like though, is when you do actually commit to a course, I like ones that have high level accountability. In oh them, cause yeah. Because then they actually make you do the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's so easy in that moment to be really motivated and to say, I'm going to do it. And then yeah. literally five hours later, fear and doubt set in every time, Yeah, every time. So you need someone, yeah, I couldn't agree more to kind of make you do the Hold work. Your feet to the fire. Yeah, literally. So you come back, you've got this, it's, hallelujah, the yep. clouds have parted, the clarity's <laughs> there. You take two days off. What happens next? Um, I cried a lot. <laughs> When I realized that I had no idea how to start a business um, and called a lot of girlfriends, um, my advice in this particular topic would be only take advice from people who are where you want to be because um, everybody said, oh, that's ambitious or maybe you shouldn't or are you happy doing what you're doing or mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So it's very interesting at moments like that when you declare to the people around you, this is what I'm going to do. And then sort of people's reactions are. reactions and because people like who you are at that point in mm -hmm. time and they get scared of who you might become and like you might be different. Yes. Is that what you found? Every, yeah, hundred percent. Not only just that, like even as I was changing and growing, um, I, I had to leave a couple of people behind that just no longer, every time I would, you know, post something or, um, you know, write a new blog or, you know, they were like, oh, I didn't know that you had these feelings. Are you doing all this for social media? Um, you've changed uh, all, the, That's correct. all the comments. <laughs> yes. And I think if we're not changing, we're dying, right? I think it's a mm. saying about that. Um, but yeah, people who just didn't understand and yeah, had to just, you have to let them go, unfortunately. Um, and that was tough. Yeah. Mm. Starting a business is hard. <laughs> for yes. so many personal and emotional reasons not just yes. because the business side of it is hard <laughs> yes it's not just about business <laughs> no um so yeah no so it was yeah it was really amazing i had yeah this eye-opening moment and then um moved into um created a website which was the first step for me so um declare it to the world declare it to the world i just put something out there and hope really <laughs> that it was going to yeah. take off uh, at the time didn't really understand how to market or do any of those things so yeah that was the start point point. Mm. and tell me about the first first event you run uh the first event i tried to run failed uh which was which almost stopped me in my tracks yeah um so i decided i, I didn't realize how ambitious it was at the time but someone wrecked someone said to me oh you should do a cheese making course and i was like yeah of course I should. Everyone loves cheese. Like, it's going to be a sellout. I was like, even better, I'll do cheese and wine, you know, so cheese making with wine. So I was like, I got in touch with the winery up in the Swan Valley and they gave me the venue for free, which was amazing. I was feeling like such a badass negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> I was such a badass businesswoman. And then um, got the cheese guy on board, ready to go. Um, and then he was telling me about the equipment that we needed. And I was like, oh. So I put it out on social media, you know, like I put up the ticket prices and everything based on the equipment that we thought we'd need and everything. And everyone was saying they were interested in coming, but no one actually bought a ticket and they were pretty expensive because we had to buy, like, if you've never made cheese before, you'll know you have to double boil everything. And if you have 15 people double boiling, that's a lot of pots and pans. Um, there's nowhere in Perth that you can hire pots and pans, I found out. Um, so I was trying to go around to Kmart and they were all like $10 each. And then you times that by the amount of pots that I needed, it was getting really pricey really fast. Um, but I was determined and I didn't want to let anyone down. So I kept going, kept going, kept going. And then, yeah, about two weeks before, I still had no ticket sales. And I was like, I'm going to have to just call this a day. Um, and so that was in about October of 2017. 
And then I gave it one last hitch uh, towards December 28, 2017, um, where I did a, my first ever actual workshop, which was a Christmas wreath making workshop. And we made artificial wreaths um, and we did it in a park in Hyde Park in Perth. And it was 35, maybe 38 degrees that day. Um, it was just too hot to be in a park. Um, and all, it was all of my girlfriends plus one stranger, one person who'd found me and bought a ticket. Mm -hmm. and I was so proud, so stressed, so hot, <laughs> but so proud, um, and that woman has come back to multiple workshops and still continues to come to my workshops, which is unreal, um, because I don't know why she came back. <laughs> but, yeah, the first, few, the first few workshops were pretty much just my mates. Yeah. Yeah. And then what happened is slowly but surely more and more strangers turned up, and then you get the... What was the moment when you thought, oh, I've got momentum now? I did a, it was probably in April of 2018, I did a workshop um, for the first time ever at a venue, like an actual venue, not just in a park or at someone's house. Um, and everybody that came was a stranger. It was the first time that every, stranger. A, str a stranger <laughs> was not a friend. Um, and so that was a stranger. And then they were all female. And that was the first time ever, um, I think there was 12 people. And... I couldn't believe it. I I was like, I did it. I've done it. It's happening. It's on. It's on. So, yeah, some really proud moments throughout the process. What is it? What is the actual impact, or what is the actual setting, or what are you actually trying to provoke with what you're doing? I'm trying to. I think. As the, the bigger I, the, the bigger the business gets, the more the business grows, and the more reach we have, the more I'm actually attracting the people who I've always wanted to attract. So the last like so who probably, are the people you want to attract? Um, hey guys, listen up. So <laughs> um, 25 to 35 year old women um, who you know maybe maybe they've just got engaged, maybe they've just got married, maybe they're still single, um, maybe they're new mums, um, but they're at a stage in their life where they feel like. There's just got to be more, and there's got like something's got to change, more and than more. more than what they're doing. Like they they feel like there's a higher purpose. They feel like there's more purpose that they've got more to give to their life, or that they've got more to give to society, um, or that they're, you know, like I met a beautiful girl the other day, a woman in my workshop, and she said that she's been in the same job for ten years and she's dying to get out, but she just has no idea what she wants to do, and she's just got no idea what her interests are, or what her passions are, and she doesn't even know where to start. And so for me, just like, you. just like me. So yeah, my, my target market is me. Yeah. Will always be me. Um, and as I grow, I'm sure the business will grow and change as that adapts. Um, but yeah, she's me. And I just want to show all the girls, cause I know, I know that there are so many of them out there, all the women. Um, I, cause I know that, yeah, like there are so many out there that are feeling that and that, you know, maybe they've just got married and all of a sudden they realize that, well, now that's over. Like, what the hell now? You know, yeah. like I'm not ready for kids, but I'm still stuck in my same job and life still continues You've on. done the exciting thing of getting married. Yeah. Now I've got to settle into it. Yeah. Now I have to, now what? You know, and same with new mums, especially new mums, I find um, really struggling, you know, um, and, you know, girls who are still single and they're, you know, coming into their thirties and they're thinking I'm worthless. No one's going to love me. Um, so, you know, I want to show them that, it starts in, it starts, oh, I'm pointing towards my heart here, but it starts in here first. Right. Um, and so really encouraging women to take some time out to, you know, I, I do a little inspirational spiel at the beginning of all of my workshops. Um, what does that sort of cover? Kind of covers the, the way that I started the business and why I started the business. Um, mm. And, you know, the breakup and the heartbreak and the um, needing to find more purpose. So that they feel like, I'm not just some woman standing up that's managed to create a business. I'm someone like who is exactly like them, you know? Yes. Um, and I get a lot of women coming up to me during or after the workshops or emails just to say like, thank you so much for sharing that. Cause you made me feel like I wasn't mm. alone, you know? Mm. Um, and for me, that's really what it's about. The creative hobby is just a, it's a vehicle to deliver a message that you need to take more time out and you need to mm. learn what you want in your life and you need to go for it so during the events do you find yourself facilitating discussions or provoking them or do you just let them be I, I i do kind of let them be i let them have fun because this is their time to really experience mm. a break from the real world um but at the same time i facilitate a lot of discussions in terms of but it's usually one-on-one -on -one or in small groups so i'll go around and i'll kind of 
chat with them and find out a little bit more about them and then usually mm. usually more often than not people will say thank you so much for sharing that like I'm going through this at the moment and I find a lot of women open mm. up about their divorces and their cheating husbands or about their you know their infidelity in their own relationships or about their kids that they love but they feel constant guilt and, ang- and anxiety about um you know and I think when you open when you start the platform off by allowing people by being honest and open people want to be honest and open back with you yeah um so i'm able to facilitate more discussions because of it there's a lot of currency in that at the moment i think that um you know people it, it, i'm gonna sound like an old bloke here but um <laughs> you know you can switch the tv on and it's by and large it's full of crap yeah you know reality tv shows and stuff it, it, it's full of crap you can disagree with me if you want but i agree that's my we don't even have tv in our house we just we just watch netflix we don't watch any reality or anything yeah exactly yeah and and you know to a degree we all know that the stuff that's being put on facebook and instagram is is the best side of that person in that day at that moment Mm -hmm. and that the rest of the moments during the day may not be quite as glamorous (laughs) filtered And, and and so on, you know, and um, and I just find that there's 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 more and more people wanting more and more real things. Yeah, I think that real connection is um is something that like I think in the, in the digital world in the last couple of years we've really created a you know an online profile and everyone has this online profile, but it's suddenly, it's starting to crash down, I think, because yeah. people want real, more real connection. People are feeling more alone than ever in today's mm. digital society. And that's why facilitating people like, oh, you're gonna go online, you're gonna do online. And you know, online is the way forward 100%, but how do you facilitate as many real connections? You know, you can be anyone you wanna be online, but when you have to turn up in person, you gotta be you. And mm-hmm. I think that's such a beautiful thing in today's day and age, I think that, we need, and I think especially as adults, it's really hard to make friends. Um, it, you know, it's hard to meet new people. It's, you know, it's... it's. I'll challenge you there. It's oh. as hard as you want to make it. Oh, I totally agree. I totally, I couldn't agree with you more. Like, it's, if, you, if you're putting yourself out there in a lot if of situations, you, it's going to happen. You'll meet new people. Yeah. If you decide to tell yourself it's hard, then it will be. Yeah. No, okay. I agree with you there. <laughs> Jeez, Bryn. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I love it. I love it. Um, but it's... um. You know, I think for women, it's like they're scared they're going to get judged, especially for women. I feel like they're, they're scared they're going to get judged or that no one's going to like them or they have nothing interesting to say. There's a real self-loathing that's happening that in female from? circles. I don't know exactly. I can't. I mean, I don't know exactly where it's coming from, but I think something that I've noticed in um, a lot of the books that I've been reading and a lot of the research that I've been doing on this particular topic, because I'm really passionate about mm. it, um, is that I think... Typically in society, women are, whilst we are super, like there's a lot of equality and there's a lot of great stuff going on and I'm definitely not discrediting what's what's happening. I think in society we're still being raised um, as young women to, you know, eventually step out of our careers and become mothers and be the things that people expect of us to be. And it's probably happening with men too, but I can only speak for women because I am female. Um, And I really feel like we are at a stage where women have more rights and more chances of being successful and more chances of being beautiful and, you know, with cosmetic surgery and with filters and with all this stuff. And I think all of a sudden with social media, there's this woman that's being portrayed so regularly who is beautiful and she's probably a mother and she's got a great husband and they're madly in love and they have this beautiful, you know, house that's decorated perfectly. And, you know, she has it all together and she still manages to make, you know, star shaped sandwiches for a kid's lunchbox, but she still runs a, she's a CEO of a business. And, you know, like all of a sudden, like every woman is like, oh, well, it looks like I'm failing, you know? And I think that there's, and there's so many women out there that are portraying their lives like that. In real life, they're not, of course, yeah, but bullshit. it's complete bullshit. But for, you know, women who are feeling a little bit lost to see that they think it's inspiration, but actually it's, it's so damaging. And I think mm. that, um, that's where a lot of this is spurring from. A lot of women feeling like, well, I can't do that. I don't have the time. I'm not good enough. And the I'm not good enough story is playing out in so many ways Mm. in today's culture. Mm. Um, And, you know, higher than ever levels of suicide and anxiety and depression. Like I think 40% of women in Australia between the ages of 20 and 40 have diagnosed anxiety and depression. Um, I read that in an article from the 
um, Australian Health Organization the other week. And that's just like, four, that's just the diagnosed ones. Mm. That's almost 50% of women in Australia. Mm. That's insane. Crap. It's absolute crap. And it's, I, it, it, it's so awful. So I think that, yeah, I, I, I like to kind of have that moment where I stand up in front of everybody and just give give some realness, you know, it's not always perfect. And if anyone watches my Instagram stories, you'll see like, if I'm having a bad day, I'll let you know. Yeah. I don't want you to feel like it's all just good days yeah. and good Steph stuff. Got it down yeah. 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 It's some not, days it's loose. Yeah. <laughs> some days it's real loose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some days it's really, really tough and that's human nature. And you know, I think that it's not all, it's okay to not be okay. And I yeah. think that we don't always have to be happy. And that's another stigma that's being put out there a lot at the moment is, oh, yeah. you always have to be up or you always find a positive. And sometimes you're allowed to feel like shit. Yes. Like that's okay. As long as you get out of it. There's a reason why you feel like shit. So sit with it and work yeah. it out. Yeah. So don't just, just get distracted with something and move mm. on. So, it's been a common thread in a number of podcasts of being okay with not being okay. It's, uh, it's, it's yeah. And I, I still don't think enough people are doing it. Mm. I, I just people are still trying to show on their highlight reel as opposed to the real reel. <laughs> <laughs> the real, I like that. <laughs> so here's a question for you because I was thinking about this because um, you know for me getting the opportunity to talk to you today um, as a as a man who, um, talking to you who creates this space for women. Um, if I were a fly on the wall in these things or. What is what do you see commonly going on that you sometimes think, God, oh, I wish men could just come and have a listen to this. This would really help them drop a few pennies. Oh, that's a good question. Um, do you know what? I don't think that there's anything that men don't already know. Like, to be honest, I, I think that probably a lot of the husbands and partners of the women who come can see the hurt and can see the struggle. I don't think they know how to help. I don't think they know how to. I don't, you know, they're probably encouraging, they're probably encouraging, maybe, maybe they're encouraging the wrong things. Like, you know, they're saying, go out with your girlfriends or go have a night out or go buy yourself a new dress. Like these quick little wins, these quick little fixes as opposed to, but you know, they probably don't know any better. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's there's nothing really that goes on that I think men aren't aware of. I think that they see it. I just don't think I don't know how to deal with it. Um, mm. And I think that maybe maybe more communication around are you okay, um, and really making it okay for women to really not have it together sometimes. I think that sometimes, you know, men are very great. Like I've noticed, you know, at, with, definitely with my partner, but with, with every guy I've ever known, um, really good at picking up and getting back on the horse and just like a real fix it mentality. You know, if you're down, we're going to do this, 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 and we're going to fix that's it. That's what we do. We like yeah. fix stuff. Yeah, exactly. You know? And I think Not about the nail in the forehead. <laughs> yeah. We just take it out. No. <laughs> yeah. Men are just fix it. They're like, oh, cool. You're feeling down. That sucks. Why don't we try this? You know, and I think it's it's beautiful because, you know, if you're that way inclined as a female, that can really help. But sometimes you really just need someone to sit with you and sympathize. Like sometimes you need someone just to sit with you and go, I hear you. I mm. hear how you're hurting, like, and I'm here for you, you know. Um, but I also think that fix it mentality is needed because you, some women will sit in their, in their hurt for a mm. very, Hurt is very... Like it's very attractive, you know. It's, um, hurt's one of those things that we, we kind of love to indulge in, like pain. Yes. As humans, I think. It's very... Seductive is the word I'm using. Yeah, of. and it's very easy to sit there because technically you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you You're can, allowed to be hurt. You don't you have can, to have motivation. Yeah. You, you don't can, have to get up. You, you don't can have switch to. it on. Yeah. And and then, yeah, it's a free pass for doing all the times. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think for that exactly, exactly. So I think for that exact reason, hurt is so... Yeah, seductive, and you can't allow them to sit in it. Um, but at the same time, you also need to sympathise. And you know, I don't personally. I don't think men are doing anything wrong. I think this is all on women. I think there are more right. women doing things wrong than there are men. And what are those things that are wrong? Wrong. <laughs> um, or I le think less this, than productive. Less than productive. I think that <laughs> we spend too much time on social media. We and we spend too much time in, in comparison land. So comparing our lives to others. Right. And I think that war well, women need to be more real. All these Instagram models, all these, you know, whatever, like these, these, you know, CEOs of businesses and, you know, 
these mother of fours that make it like they've got it all together when they actually don't and they're just yeah. making it you know it's beautiful to show the good parts of your life it is it's so good but show some equally shitty parts so that people think that don't realize yeah you know that it's it's not always good do and i think to actually show? pardon do we need to actually do you know i don't even think we do i think people just need to give less of a fuck to be honest about other people's <laughs> lives <laughs> less of a fuck. that's my favorite book just by the way yeah. um the book about giving less of a fuck but um i think that yeah if you stopped if we all stopped comparing ourselves to other people yeah. So much of this would end. I just got to have some real chats with people. Yeah. Yeah. Have some real chats. Make some connections. Move, move out of your comfort zone and meet some new people. And you're going to find out pretty quickly that everyone's in the same boat as you. Yeah. We're all in the same boat. Correct. Men, women, everybody. Yeah. We're all just trying to figure it out. Mm hmm. Yeah. We all have good days and bad days. We all put our good shit on social media. <laughs> yeah. I'm finding more and more that, because men do compare as well. Mm. And I'm finding more and more that, you know, you can look around and go, oh, this is not quite how I thought it was supposed to be, you know? Um, yes. And, and all of a sudden, because it's not quite stacked up and you're not quite, you know, the, the woman in the place doing the thing or the man in the place doing the thing that everyone's told you, then all of a sudden, then the big... The biggest error in thinking is sitting there and then going, it must be me. Mm. And yeah. that that's the gateway of, right, it must be me. And then, then you try and cover up, then you start pushing things out into the world. Mm -hmm. um, and then between who you really are and what you're trying to portray creates this tension. And then that tension gets quite unbearable and you have to sort of sedate or negate it. And then that makes you feel even less good about yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you become quite isolated. Yeah, absolutely. And alone. You hit the nail on the head completely. And then you become silent. And as um, previous podcast guest Leon points out, is when you become silent, that's when dark things happen. Mm -hmm. And so I think right at, what I'm loving about what you're saying is right at the very top of it all is instead of going, it, it's not you, it's just, Learn something a bit different. Try something a I bit think, different. Yeah, at the top of it all, it's it's, it's not you, but it's just different. like stop listening to everybody else's opinion of how your life should be, and yeah. stop putting it, stop putting all these ridiculous expectations on yourself, and just yeah. try new things and mm. figure it out for yourself. You know, figure out exactly where you want to be and why you want to be there. Um, Switch your fucking phone off. Yes. Get a notepad out and a pen and just write something down. Yeah. Do a brainstorm. Do a brainstorm. Yeah. Or just. Write some stuff down. Yeah. Or sit still mm -hmm. for just a few. Listen minutes. to your thoughts for twenty minutes for yeah. one time, just one time. Listen to them. Like yeah. really listen, really watch them, and you'll see like so many of our thoughts are negative. Obviously, it's like like seventy, eighty-five percent. Yes. Is that? I think that's the stat. Eighty-five percent of our thoughts are negative. And if you can just learn to, you know, control some of those as well, that's really helpful. Or I just think. not buy into them. Yeah. Don't give them weight. Yeah. Yeah. My fiance has a great phrase. Let's not blow oxygen into that fire. Oh, I like that <laughs> phrase. That's a really good phrase. I'm going to use that. Because then it will go out. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's really good. So what does the future of House of Hobbit look like? Because you've started doing speaking now, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a so pretty... So is this taking the message that you see and the learnings that you see in working with the ladies and now just more of that in inspirational speech at the start? Yeah, absolutely. I like, I think I've always wanted to be a speaker deep down. Um, I think that, not, I didn't know that um, until recently. Uh, yeah. I've always been shit scared of public speaking, to be honest. But I've always been a very natural talker. Um, was always told off at school for talking too much. Um, <laughs> I've always been told that I'm too opinionated, too loud, too, um, you know, talk too much in every job ever. I've had performance management for being talking too much. Um, and so I kind of feel like maybe you should just really use it to your to your advantage instead of to your disadvantage. Yeah. Um, just take that thing and yeah. find its rightful place. Yes, exactly. You know, the, yeah. I, I remember thinking at my last job, just thinking to myself, "There's got to be a job where they love people who talk. Like, there's just got there's got to be one somewhere. <laughs> like, there's got to be one where my personality is encouraged. <laughs> yeah, like you know, there's just there's got to be somewhere for me. Um, but yes, I love speaking. Um, I've had a few 
pretty large public speaking gigs now and I was so nervous and still remain to be very nervous in front of big audiences um but just feel so good at the end of it and just feel like I really am doing what I've always wanted to do what are the sort of key messages you're trying to get across when you speak um there's a couple um there's one I do I, I do a few different like speeches but um I think one of them is the topic of give less give less of a fuck um, which for me, I'm really, really, really passionate about um, because I feel like we give weight to so many of people's opinions mm. um, and so many expe- people, you know, our parents, our bosses, our partners, you know, our kids, our friends, you know, oh, she said, I don't, th- she, you know, she or he said, I'm not going to be good at that. So maybe I won't try it. You know, we give so much weight to other people's ex- mm. opinions of us. Um, and so that's one thing I'm really passionate about speaking about. And the second one is, yeah, finding more passion in your life. For, you know more fulfillment and, and if you don't know how to find it then helping women find where to find it um is i'm really passionate about that because that's where i was and i i know exactly how that feels and i know how easy it is to get out of well not easy you know of course everything's you know takes time but i know there are ways to get out of it even though it feels like there's sometimes for those people who are in that situation it feels like there's no there's no way out well, so tony robbins says it takes a moment to change your life oh i love tony <laughs> <laughs> it does and it's exactly right and it, it's a decision and once you make the decision it's it's done but it's done um so yeah they're probably the the main topics i speak but i also speak about business um quite a bit and overcoming fear in starting business mm. because there are a lot of i meet a lot of budding um creatives throughout my journey um because i bring creatives in to run the workshops for me while I facilitate and do all the back end ticket sales and all that sort of stuff, all the admin behind it. Um, and some of them are so creative and just don't believe in themselves, um, enough to actually make what they do, you Mm. know, a full-time hustle. Uh, and so I'm really passionate about helping people break out of the Monday to Friday and start something that they're passionate about. Um, and monetize it because there's no point going into business unless you're making money at the end of the day. Um, well, yeah, because that's not a business; it's a hobby. <laughs> exactly. exactly, it's a passion project, well, yeah, um, which is beautiful too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really, yeah, I love, and I, again, that's on, usually only to women as well. So, real, <laughs> really surrounded myself with my with my target market. But um, well, why not? Yeah, I love it every day. Excellent. Mm. What do you think Western Australia would look like if um, more ladies took on board your message? I think I'm actually pretty impressed with WA. I think that we're very mindful compared to some of the other states in Australia. Um, Mm. Coming from Queensland um, and having visited Sydney a lot, I think that we are some of the more mindful groups of people um, in Australia. uh, And there's a lot more of a push towards mindfulness here than there is in other cities. Um, I think that if... If you're a girl boss here, you would see it. Um, we call them girl bosses. That's what we're all called. Um, that have our own businesses. Um, you, I like that, the though. love for each other and the support networks are insane. Like it is the most supportive group of, and there's thousands of us, you know, and it's so beautiful. And I think that we're doing really, really, really well. I think that we could get that 40% number down, that 40% of women who are struggling with anxiety and depression. Um, that's the number that I'd like to lower. Mm. Um, that's the thing that I'd like to change because it is, it's really all in your head. And like, I, th- I think that there's so much that can be changed by spending more time on yourself and the power of positive thinking and, you know, all that and blah, blah. It sounds so woo woo, but it's so true. Um, and I know because I've done it, you know, I've, I've, I've been riddled with anxiety and not knowing what steps to take next. And there, there is like, a, there is a way out. And I would like to see that number become lower and to see more women embracing themselves and their bodies and their lives a little bit more. Mm. Awesome. What does, um, what does the next three to five years look like? It's hard because it's um like it changes all the time, um, and, and I think as a small business that's that's what happens. Um, but part of me, like if you'd asked me that two months ago, I'd have been like, "Cool, we're going to break into every state in Australia." Um, you know, I want to have one in Queensland, I want to have one in Sydney, I want to have one in Melbourne, like a house of hobby everywhere because I think it's needed. But then it starts to change, and you know, I've started getting more speaking gigs, and I'm thinking maybe, maybe there is more 
of a maybe you can have more impact by just using your voice um or um you know i've just started up a uh, a 12-week course for people who are wanting to start up a side hustle or a side hustle business and that's an online course so um you know maybe 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 i'm better off helping women who are so who are ready to take action who are ready to break the mold you know um so there's a few different things that i've got simmering away at the moment that i'm not really sure which direction any of them are going to go in Mm. um but the message remains the same the message will always be the same and that'll be yeah do more for you find out what you want Mm. and take action on it so that's that's really where house of hobby or whatever it is that i decide to do will go it'll always be that message yeah what have you learned about yourself doing all of this? Oh. Um, I've had a mindset coach since since January this year um, because... A mindset coach? Yeah, okay, I say mindset coach. Um, well, she is. I don't really know what else to call her. Um, she's an NLP practitioner, so um, she yeah. does a lot of... Um, I guess it's counselling in a way, but it's, mm. it's more... Uh, it's hard to describe unless you know what NLP is. But for those of you who do, um, I, I see a mindset coach and she really helps me overcome some of the made up belief, well, not made up, the beliefs that I have um, about my life and myself and helps me overcome them. Mm. Um, and something that I really learned about myself throughout this process was um, there was a probably the number one thing that I'd learned about myself, which I did not know, which was so blaringly obvious now. Um, was it the chatting? Yeah, no, well, that too. <laughs> hey, you can make money from that. Um, no, it was. Um, I had this this con- this story of unworthiness, and it was so it ran so deep. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it was there. And I, I just felt so unworthy, and I didn't charge for the first long time with House Probably I didn't charge enough for tickets. I didn't make any money. I didn't do any of the things that you're supposed to do, and I I couldn't because I didn't think I was worth it. And then when I started getting success, um, I gave it away. And, you know, my partner now, my current partner, has been my business coach um, up until recently. And um, because he got fired. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Um, But he has been my business coach up until recently. And uh, he, you know, he gave me, he, he gave me so much. I would have definitely not got here without him. And I... People would say, oh, you've made, you had such great success. And I would straight away be like, oh, it's all Tim. You know, it's, it's not me. It's all Tim. And I was giving it away because I didn't feel worthy of receiving the compliments or the success or anything. Um, and that was something that she really, my mindset coach really helped me get over was this feeling of unworthiness and this feeling of, no, you have worked hard and you do deserve it. And look at how done? much you're providing. What have you providing. done with that story then? Have you got rid of it? Have you replaced it? I think I, yeah, it's, it's amazing. The NLP techniques are crazy. Um, Mm. but it's, I think it's been replaced with a, um, with a new story, which is you are making change and you are helping and, you know, you deserve to be compensated. You know, you deserve it because you're, you're really working hard and you're doing it with heart and taking, you know, getting paid, does is not is you does not make you you shouldn't be made be made to feel guilty for taking payment you know um like you deserve it and i think that that was probably the biggest real lesson for me was that i didn't like to be i always thought money was dirty and i didn't want to be associated with money or mm. be associated with you know people thinking oh she's making a lot of money or um you know anything like that because i thought that it would make me look like i was a shark or like my heart wasn't in it but you can have your heart fully in it and still take a wage and still just that you still deserve mm. the money, you know? So big, big, big lesson for me there. Mm. Yeah. Huge. Um, and took a long time to crack that, to crack that ego, that ego fin actually. Yeah. Mm. Cause it would, I imagine a story like that would have run super deep. It was much, it was under a lot of layers. Yeah. So there was like a, I felt guilty, was it the first layer and then the second layer was you know <clears throat> i'm not good enough and then the layer under that was actually i do believe in myself but i don't believe that i deserve money and then yeah unworthiness was the was the final layer so it was definitely we had to peel that one back like an onion over a, over many 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 months with a few tears yeah a like lot a of tears of... <laughs> like exactly like an onion <laughs> um yeah there's a lot of tears it was pretty it was pretty hardcore um but so relieving to get rid of that feeling. It's awesome when you do work like that, isn't it? 
I can't recommend it enough and I don't think anyone is above it. I think everyone needs to, you know, keep, keep developing and keep making change yeah. in your is own headspace. Are you a human? Yes. Then the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> you need to keep working on your mind yeah. and on the stuff that maybe you uh, have been conditioned to believe over time that maybe is not actually your belief deep down. Yeah. When you bring it up to the light, so they often just go. Phew. Yeah, they're like, oh, that's, that's not, actually not that's, mine. That's not mine. That's not for me. That's not helpful. No, no. Um, so yeah, that's what I've loved. So that's probably yeah. My number one learning was that I was super, had a lot of, yeah, unworthiness, mm. which I've turned around. So that's really lovely. What's Stephanie grateful for? What am I grateful for? I'm grateful for opportunity at the moment. Really grateful for opportunity. Uh, grateful to be here and speaking to you, honestly. Um, and grateful to be able to do what I do every day. Every now and then I have to pinch myself that I don't have to go to work, you know? Mm. Like, I obviously, I work every single day. Um, but that I don't have to... I'm not confined to being stuck in an office for, you know, 8.5 hours a day. Um, and even though sometimes it gets a lot a lot there's a lot more work in starting your own business um than there is in the nine to five job um so grateful that i get to spend my days doing things that i love and things mm. on my terms and my choice so yeah super grateful for opportunity and we'll say yes to most things that are thrown my way so um, that's what and do you have any um patterns or routine routines to keep yourself grounded um I have a, a very routine person, um, so yes, I would say so. There's definitely routines in Did my you life. Get that from the boarding school experience. I would say so. Yeah, I think that once I kind of came out of school and started, you know, real life. Yeah, boarding school definitely because it's very regiment there. Um, but I think once I came out of school and started real life, you know, you go to nine to five job, but you still want to cook dinner and make lunch for the next day. You still want to go to the gym and you still want to, and I was like, okay, I, I'm going to have to schedule this. Like I'm just, a, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm an organized person because I'm definitely not, but I, um, I'm a routine person. I like to right. do the same things. I could eat the same meal every night for a week and I would have no problem with that. Mm. My partner would kill me, but uh, I would do it. Um, so for me, yeah, we wake up really early in the mornings. We usually up by 6 a.m. Um, go get coffee and come back we make breakfast and then we do an hour of work and then we go to the gym for an hour um then we come home and i do a couple more hours of work and then i usually spend a couple of hours my partner also works for himself um so we just spend a couple of hours in the middle of the day just hanging out and you know it's the freedom of being able to work for yourself is that you know one of the things we really wanted was more time to more connection um mm. so spend a couple of hours a day together and then the afternoon i either continue working for a couple of hours or i go see some friends or i go see my family um and then the night time is a strictly no work time. So, yeah, it's we do HelloFresh every week. <laughs> I mean, right. I love HelloFresh. The it's like they get they get meals delivered to you, um, oh, right. and you like cook them. So they you just get the, like the grocery items and the and the recipe, um, and we love that. So there we have a few people in Perth, or definitely a lot of people in Perth that do HelloFresh. It's really good. Um, and so yeah, that's pretty much it. Monday to Friday, and then weekends I work like crazy so we do three or four workshops a weekend every weekend yeah. and that's mental so no routine no routine no routine. just get it done just getting it done yeah, yeah. just don't eat much don't get much <laughs> break don't get much downtime don't get enough sleep yeah and yeah that, that's what the week's for so well the last question i always have been asking most of my guests of recent is if there is one little nugget of information that you could upload into the collective consciousness so we all just got it what would it be i'm thinking <laughs> i have so many I things I that <laughs> yeah i have so many things that i would love to upload to the collective consciousness but um i think they're probably the number one thing and it sounds so woo woo but um would be just find what makes you happy. You know, you can, the things that you think are going to make you happy probably won't. Um, money, job security, um, just, you know, a thousand wives, whatever it might be that, you know, you're interested in it. Those things might not make you, probably won't make you happy. Um, I feel like we're always caught in this rat race of people who are just trying to make money all the time. 
trying to, you know, get that promotion so they can have more money so they can live a fuller life. But, you know, you look at people like Robin Williams, um, who, you know, had everything and committed suicide anyway because he wasn't happy. So I think, you know, really it's just find something that makes you happy and it, it's probably not going to be what you think it is or you, the things that you're driving for at the moment. Um, and I really would love to upload that into everyone's brains. Mm. More fulfillment. Yeah. That would be it. If I could if I could say anything, that would be it. Excellent. And if someone's listened to this and they want to come find you, mm. where where can we find you? Um, you can check us out on Instagram. Um, we're at H O H Perth, so H O H House of Poppy Perth. Um, or you can check us out uh www dot net. So check us out. I would love to have any girls along and men. Men are welcome too. Just know that it's super femmy. <laughs> yeah. And um, are they publicly open events or the private or a mixture of the two? So they're all publicly open events, um, but we also do private events. We do a lot of hens parties, birthday parties. And we've started cracking into the corporate market now. So we're doing a lot of corporate gigs. Um, yeah, so pretty much for any occasion. Um, but yeah, we do yeah three to four, four public workshops a weekend. So you can just, you'll be able to see them on our website, all the upcoming ones. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks so much, Brian. Stephanie, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Oh, thanks. I feel like I've, um, yeah, been very privileged to look into, uh, listen to your journey, but also um, I feel like I've had the privilege to listen to, listen to, women on a bigger scale <laughs> from, from what you do. I hope and, so. And the opportunity as a male just to ask those questions and listen and hear. It's, it's um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we do it enough. You're problem solvers and we love that about you. Don't change. <laughs> don't, don't change as men, please. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's nice. It's, I don't think men are doing anything wrong. I don't, I don't think anyone's doing anything wrong I think it's just a lack of fulfillment really mm. yeah mm. yeah thank, thank you. you very much <laughs>